this education that we try and do wants to kind of you know get it out there that just because you have a brain tumor doesn't mean that your life is over you can definitely live a long productive life with a brain tumor i know some other people that you know have really struggled with the brain tumors and uh, you know that's where support groups really really help uh, you know you definitely have to investigate some sort of support system i was lucky i had a family around me that you know, it's kind of got my weird humor and laughed and helped me through it. Um, but a lot of people, if you don't have that, you, you need to find a support group for yourself. My name is Norm Carey. I'm a radiation oncologist at uh, Prince Margaret Hospital and uh, head of the site group for central nervous system tumors and the co-director of the Gamma Knife Center at uh, University Health Network. Uh, my name is Dr. Mojgan Hodai. I'm a neurosurgeon at the University Health Network and I'm currently the surgical co-director of the Gamma Knife uh, Radio Surgery Center at the Toronto Western. So there's, there's two terms to be started out here. The first term is radiosurgery and what that means is is a combined neurosurgical radiation oncology approach with the application of a frame and then imaging in the treatment position and then targeting with some form of radiation whatever the target has to be in a single day session. So that's the term radiosurgery. The term gamma knife or cyber knife or linear accelerators are different uh, technologies that can deliver that single large dose of radiotherapy to the target. And so that uh, gamma knife radiosurgery, cyber knife radiosurgery or LINAC based radiosurgery are really all referring to the same process. So with Gamma Knife, uh, at the time of the treatment, patients really don't feel anything. They're being simultaneously treated with 192 small beams, all focusing on that one point in space, which we make sure with our targeting uh, um, methods to place that at the center of the, uh, of the 192 cobalt sources, all pointed at that one point. So during the treatment, the patients feel nothing other than potentially boredom. <laughs> but we actually encourage them to bring their own uh, DVD or CD that uh, their, their, their personal music. We have a lot of selections and they can listen to that while they fall asleep during treatment. But what's a little intimidating for them is having the frame uh, literally um, bolted onto their head. That's necessary because we need very accurate imaging, but more importantly, we need immobilization to be able to deliver that treatment, sometimes over a one hour period so that they're not moving during the treatment. So the frame that's bolted to their head is actually bolted to the treatment couch so that it provides a very, very important mobilization process for something as, as fine-tuned as this. When we do this, we're able to achieve very high degree of accuracy to tighter than one millimeter uh, in space. So this permits very, very uh, defined the treatment uh, in the brain in tiny areas, so we use it obviously for benign tumors, especially in, in locations that are rather tricky or difficult to get to. So this is the best way we can ensure that with uh, radiation, and that is at times superior to what we can do with an op open operation. So Gamma Knife has the frame, whereas the other ones have a variety of different methods of stabilizing the head, but they cannot achieve that degree of accuracy that a frame can. There's some discomfort putting the frame on. It's, uh, you know, obviously there has to be four um, uh, local anesthetic injections at the pin sites, two at the front and two at the back, so that if anything is, it, there's always a bit of a bee sting as the, as the numbness uh, sets in within a second of doing the injection. But beyond that, it's more of a feeling of tightness uh, when they're wearing the frame and rarely is, a, is it a painful issue wearing it. Afterwards, obviously, there's the potential risks for delayed effects. Occasionally, patients may have a headache or uh, feel slightly nauseated uh, within 12 to 24 hours of the treatment, but that's quite uncommon, actually. Most often, though, any potential uh, serious complications will occur anywhere from 3 to 6 months to 18 to 24 months out, and that is uh, largely related to where exactly we're giving the treatment. So. If it happens to be a, a tumor of the hearing nerve called an acoustic neuroma, then clearly uh, it's very adjacent to the facial nerve which moves the face and so there's a 2-3% to chance that there might be some weakness of the face. Or uh, if it's on the hearing nerve itself, then of course there's a chance that there might be some decrease in the hearing over the ensuing few years after this treatment. The, the key thing about the gamma knife is that the method of the delivery of radiation uh, is different and therefore the effects on the patient is also different. Oftentimes patients think of radiation as something that's going to seriously debilitate them, 
they've been nauseated, lose their hair, they're unwell for a prolonged period of time. That's not the experience that they have with Gamalex. Uh, it's a day treatment. They might feel a bit fatigued for a day or so. There's typically very little in terms of nausea. They don't lose their hair. Uh, they recover and we've had patients that have gone back to work in about one or two days after treatment. Just because you have a diagnosis that uh, other people think is, is tragic and, and horrible doesn't mean they can't beat it. Um, if you stay positive, it's amazing what your body can do. Try and stay positive, surround yourself with positive people, and, and just live your life.